astrology and science get along? To answer this, we need to understand that both astrology and science are nothing but ways of trying to know the universe, and that they both try to know the universe in different ways, and that depending on how we look at the universe, it will show us different aspects of itself. So science makes the fundamental assumption that the basis of everything is matter and energy. And using the scientific method, we make observations about whatever is out there in the objective world. And then we make assumptions about how things are going to work out there. And then we test those assumptions against the data. And if the assumptions stand up to the data, great. Okay, we consider ourselves to know something about the world now. But if those assumptions do not match up with the data, then we have to revise our assumptions because the reality that is out there is stronger than whatever preferences we might have. And this is great. It keeps us objective. It keeps us from being clouded by, by preferences, by, you know, trying to make the world into something that we want it to be other than what it really is. And the scientific method has been so effective for the last 500 years. I mean, we have come to know things that we could have never known before. We have gotten rid of so much superstition. We have been able to take control of so many aspects of life and do amazing things, you know, go to space, cure diseases, save you know, millions of lives, all kinds of amazing things that we have done with science. And because it works so well, it has convinced many of us that this is the best and only way of knowing the universe at all. And while I don't take any issue with what science does in its own domain, you know, that is in the uh, looking at the material world, I do take issue with this idea that, uh, that it is the best and only way of trying to know the universe. Um, I think that the scientific uh, spotlight is a very bright and focused spotlight, right? And just like a real spotlight, that bright and focused light shines on whatever it shines on very clearly. We can see everything in there with like crystal clarity, right? We can see all of the details, but we cannot see anything that falls outside of that spotlight. Now, that doesn't mean that just because we can only see what's in the spotlight that everything that is outside of the spotlight is not real or not there at all, right? We know that there's other stuff going on. Now, astrology focuses that light differently. The light is more diffuse, okay? It's not as tightly focused. And so it is not as bright, right? So we don't use astrology to look at the same kind of things that we would try to look at with science. We're trying to look at a different order of reality altogether, okay? So the only problems that, that arise between science and astrology are where we confuse one way of looking at things for another. What does astrology give us and, and how does it seek to know the universe? Well, unlike science, which sees the basis of everything as matter and energy, Astrology and other systems like it see the basis of everything as consciousness. Okay, so consciousness is fundamental to the universe itself, and even matter and energy would be expressions of that fundamental consciousness. Now, we can't prove that from a scientific standpoint, right? It's an assumption that we make. By the same token, from the scientific standpoint, we cannot prove that matter and energy are the fundamental of everything. That, too, is its own assumption. So at some point, we have to make a basic assumption about the nature of reality and then act as if it were true and then see what that gives us. And obviously, making the assumption about matter and energy at the basis of everything has given us a lot, okay? So we know that it works. We know that it works in the material world, and the material world is very good at convincing us that it is all there is. But if we make that assumption that consciousness is fundamental, then 
the world starts showing itself to us in a very different way. Okay, and the evidence that it starts to give us piles up and it is every bit as convincing as the kind of evidence that we would get in science in the material world. So one of the most convincing uh, sources of this is actually astrology, but it's not, you know, magazine astrology. It's not sun sign astrology. It's archetypal astrology. When dealing with the symbolism of the planets and looking at how the archetypes combine based on the relationships of the planets, it's possible to predict with great accuracy the archetypal landscape of a time, meaning we can look to a certain period of time and say something about a kind of inner symbolic quality to things, some way in which events at that time will relate based on some common themes. And they can be events in the outer world, uh, either in an individual's life or for the world. And they can also be inner events like psychological, emotional, spiritual type events. Now, we still can't use astrology very effectively to predict concrete events. We only know how they're going to relate to certain themes. It is possible to be rigorous, to be discerning, to be empirical as we do this. And there's lots of great astrological research out there, and I'll put some links to things. I want to illustrate this with some examples now. So let's take the planetary archetype of Uranus. Uranus has to do with awakening, with liberation, and with sudden change. It corresponds to the archetypal characters of like the rebel, the freedom fighter, the, the renegade, the genius. You know, it could apply to an artist who suddenly changes the whole art form, or a basketball player who changes the game, or a scientist who comes up with a theory that revolutionizes everything. By the same token, it could just apply to eccentric behavior. And it could also show up as a lightning strike, or a sudden bolt of insight, or an earthquake. So we have to always remember that the planetary archetypes cover all of creation that we could ever experience, okay? Now, let's take a look at another planetary archetype, kind of an opposite energy, Saturn. Saturn is about preservation and control and uh, tradition and effort. It relates to structures, to foundations, and these could be structures and foundations of all kind. They could be you know, architectural, but they could be social, they could be psychological, uh, they could be religious, it could have to do with authority. It's All of these things relate to Saturn. So now, if we know that during this time, Uranus and Saturn are in a powerful aspect to one another, meaning that they are facing one another at this time, their energies are combining, and mutually influencing and activating one another and combining in a whole bunch of different ways, then we go, aha, all right, I get it. Um, you know, Uranus, the principle of liberation versus Saturn, the principle of control and restriction. And think of all that's been going on with COVID around the vaccine and the masks and, and things like that. Um, think about conservatives versus liberals right? Uh, conservatives would be Saturn, liberals, Uranus. But also think about the way that it combines in these really peculiar ways, like on the January 6th insurrection, where we had conservative Saturn, anarchists, Uranus. You know, people guided by traditional values, Saturn, who want to upend and, you know, overturn our whole society and, and you know, do away with democracy and it's sudden change, right? Uranus. So the archetypes are not just like cut and dry concepts. They, they color things in very interesting ways. So this is one of the ways that I think the universe speaks to us, right? If we assume that the universe is conscious, then we have to look for the ways in which that consciousness is trying to communicate. And astrology 
is a beautiful example of it. And there are numerous other ways, but this is one very consistent way that when we can get into the way that it actually works and not confuse it for the way science works, then we can begin to appreciate what's actually going on. So I hope this was useful and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.